Welcome to episode one of our visualization for Blender series. In the first section of this video, we're gonna take a look at what happens when you receive a project package from a client. Depending on the job and the client, the package could vary, but in most cases, you'll get things like concept art, storyboards, scripts, and usually a brief. You might receive these materials via email, WeTransfer, or any other file sharing service. Once you've received the package, it's usually in a zip file, but of course it can be in a variety of file types. For our purposes, we're gonna be working inside of a Prism project that we'll be showing you how to set up in episode two. I like to organize everything into a client space folder. So within our client space folder, I like to create two subfolders, a from client folder and a to client folder. These names are obviously pretty self-explanatory and any files that we receive from the client go into the from client folder and any deliverables or packages that we want to send back, such as renders, will go into to client and is usually organized by date to keep things pretty neat. So let's just dive into the package that we've received then. After you've extracted the zip file, you'll find the usual suspects of concept art, scripts and storyboards. We'll start by looking at the script to get a better sense of what the project is about. Now, at this point, you'd have typically had a brief from the client and you'd have read through it, but it's still really crucial to read the script thoroughly too, as scripts give you essential details about story, characters, and just the overall feel of the scenes that you're gonna be making. And this will just help to guide your work a little bit more. In our example, we're working on a short called High Noon in Ironwood, and it's set in a Western town and features two main characters. Wyatt is the hero and Kane is the villain. As we go through the script, it's important to note the emotions, the settings, and little details like how the characters move, what they're wearing, because all this will inform the shots that you'll be creating later on. Next up, we're gonna look at the storyboards. Storyboards can come in various formats. Sometimes you might just get a single PDF with multiple pages or even Word documents, but PDF tends to be the most common. So here you can see we have several pages of storyboards, and immediately you'll notice some really nice art with some key descriptions about each shot. You have your shot numbers, and occasionally you may be provided with things like lens information, though that again depends on the client and the job. For instance, in shot one here, we can see a vulture pecking at a carcass under the blazing sun. Immediately from this small description, you get an idea of the tone, mood, and the visual style for the scene. Shot two moves to an establishing shot of the town, Ironwood, with a particular focus on this central church here at the end of the street. This obviously seems to be a pivotal location in the story, and you can really start to imagine how these scenes are gonna start playing out. As a previous artist, your main job is to take these 2D concepts from the client and transform them into a 3D space. Storyboards are great guides, but they aren't set in stone. They're more like suggestions of what the client wants, and part of your role as a previous artist is to interpret them. For example, in shot five, we get a close-up of Kane, who's our villain. He's described as wearing black with an eye patch and a bandana. And just from that description alone, you can immediately start to imagine how he'll look and how he'll move and interact with other characters. If we jump back into the script, we can see in the story that Wyatt is trying to reason with Kane in a tense face-off, but it's clear that things are going to escalate into a gunfight. The action here is key. Sort of quick camera movements, close-ups, intense pacing are all things to keep in mind as you visualize this section of the scene. When we get to that climactic shot, the hero, Wyatt, is faster when he draws his weapon, and he fires before Kane even gets a chance to raise his weapon, which gives you a sense of the speed and the timing you're going to need to really bring this to life. After you've reviewed your storyboard and scripts, it's time to move on to the concept art. Concept art helps you understand the look and feel of the world that you're building. You may not always receive concept art from a client, but when you do, it's such a fantastic resource for understanding the lighting, mood, and overall aesthetic that the client is trying to achieve. For example, we have a detailed concept here of Wyatt the hero. His light coloured clothing and overall more heroic demeanour that these images are giving off tell us a lot about his character. And here's some drawings of Kane, sort of dressed in a darker tone and he's got his eye patch and his bandana on, clearly giving off the villainous vibe. These pieces of key art will help to guide the creation of your 3D characters and the environments. We've also been provided some great concept art of the town itself and its buildings. You sort of get that traditional Western vibe with the wooden buildings and the dusty streets and the huge canyons rising above the town in the background. The church, again, plays a central role in this showdown, so you want to refer back to the concept art to get the design details right of that too. A useful tool I recommend for organising all of your concept art is software called PureRef. 
It's completely free and it allows you to create a massive digital mood board that's really easy to help you reference as you're putting these characters and buildings together. You can drop in your images really easily, make notes and organize them however you'd like. So for instance, you can create sections for characters, buildings, weapons, anything you need to keep track of. After reviewing all the materials that you receive from your client, I like to move everything from the client space folder to a separate resources folder. This keeps everything organized and makes sure that your client files are now separate from your working files. Plus, if you get more files from the client later on, you can add them to the appropriate folders without cluttering up your projects. When we're sort of deciding on composition, lighting, or just brainstorming shot ideas, one of the best resources out there is a website called Film Grab. Uh, it's an incredible tool that features stills from nearly any film you could think of, with about 40 or 50 shots from each movie. Since we're going to be working on a Western, uh, we should probably search for Western films. And as you can see, tons of films related to the genre come up immediately, offering a variety of shots that we can pull inspiration from. So for example, let's have a look at The Mercenary. Here you can see again about 40 to 50 different shots showcasing various compositions and lighting setups that we can draw from. This is usually really useful for getting ideas for shot compositing and just lighting for our project in general. So let's just take this shot for instance. We can see the camera is placed at a lower angle looking up and this can convey to a viewer a sense of power and authority which is perfect for our villain. We can also get sort of ideas for lighting here such as rim lighting on his shoulder and these are just a couple of elements that we may want to incorporate into our concept as a whole. So we're also gonna check out um, Westworld. So shots like this wide view of the town can really help us to understand how to capture the look and the feel of a Western setting. For example, this high angled shot from above, looking down on this character, this could easily translate into one of our scenes, maybe where we're showing a dead character lying in the street or something after the gunfight. Film Grab is a really incredibly valuable tool when it comes to finding your visual inspiration and just some general ideas for your project in terms of composition and lighting. So once you've collected your references of different types of shot compositions, lighting and environment inspirations from Film Grab, we can actually go ahead and integrate them with PureF and create our own section for these cinematic references. As you can see, we can make a section for Film Grab and then go ahead and sort and name these reference images however you like, such as by film name, director, or something like the type of shot. Or you could even do it by something like time of day or colour or lighting and easily be able to refer back to them whenever you need them. Having cinematic references is important for previews because it gives you a solid starting point to match the tone and style that the project is going for. It's almost like having a cheat sheet for lighting, framing, and a look that we already know works on another film, and it can spark ideas or solutions when you're stuck. It isn't just copying, it's learning from what's already been proven to look and feel amazing on screen. And that's it for episode one. Make sure to tune in for episode two, which is arguably one of the most important of this series, as we'll be covering how to set up Prism. This is used for our project source control and project management as a whole, and is gonna be an essential tool throughout the entire series. Mm -hmm.